Funnily, the clouds have got a little bit lighter again with the iPad. And now the K-pad, Koala pad, well that's okay. Yeah, could have that as a thing on my channel. The only pad you should be uh, trying to get hold of to buy is the Koala pad. I do believe they did it for other computers as well. Apple II and Atari, I think. I think there was a version of the software for them too. Actually, I wanted uh, an actual full-size uh, A3 tablet uh, interface control or whatever you want to call it for my Amiga. So, yeah, living in a strange world. Goddamn... Uh, idiot government is uh, still not restricting people enough so now the uh, the the Kent or cunt variant as I like to call it from the UK has had some uh, one night stand uh, you know drunken sex with the uh, South African uh, variant and their new baby is the, the worst of both it's more infectious and the mortality rate is higher and it's more resistant to the vaccine that they've got already. Possibly completely resistant. So before I've even had a vaccine, uh, we could be fucked. So, won't be any carpet buying then going on, really. Uh, mind you, there is one carpet place where it's, uh, you can act, it's, it's sort of like a small like industrial unit with a big car park in front of it. Us and they put the uh, you know some of the stuff outside. Now, yeah, when it's sunny, I suppose we could just about do that if I've got a face mask, a shield, a thick scarf going around my neck, so none of their stink virus goes up the bottom of the visor. And if it's a hot day, the visor won't steam up, so I won't come away with some ridiculously patterned carpet because I couldn't see fuck all. Oof. It's like artificial intelligence trying to recognise, uh, you know, a video camera feed when you go shopping and you fucking, your visor's all steamed up and you've got to work out, is this shit, how long is the date on this shit? I can't read it. Right, so I've said to the latest, <clears throat> although in one of these there is going to be a uh, rescue on Fractalus. <coughs> and there it is, rescue on Fractalus. Mm, the lighting conditions are, mm, I probably would have played rescue on Fractalus in these lighting conditions. But with a quick shot turn, I don't think we've got the, uh, the quick shot turbo down here. Might have the quick shot to. Oh, we do have the uh, quick shot turbo. Right. I guess we're playing rescue on Fractalus. <coughs> yeah, I've got two of these. One of them, the uh, top five button will do trigger button doesn't work. The little pressure pad is not good. I don't know what they're called, so I can't, you know, look up if you can buy shit like that. I have to cannibalise an old uh, 1981 or 82 remote control for a British TV to get them. Or even the uh, Atari VCS joystick, although they're probably knackered as well. The, uh, the little uh, metal pads on there. Pressure pads. Right, this has actually got an auto fire thing in here. Let's do the silhouette of. Oh, we won't be able to do it because the screen's black. Ah, you asshole. Mmm. Yeah, Rescue on Factorless, I know I played on the C64 for the first time a week before Christmas. Oh, I must have auto fire on. Have I got auto fire on? 
because it's uh, launched me straight away. I didn't press anything. Level four is actually quite sedate, so uh, actually, where's the remote? Let's give it the full fourteen to nine girtness. turn the shields off and then A to open the airlock But it's not shit, there is a code on involved, but it's not shit. So the frame rate is never going to be as good as the Atari's. Because uh, not only a C64 CPU uh, is slower, but um, yeah, see, if you go at full speed, you'd be out of range by the time you are landing. Most of the time, but not this time. Oh, you might be able to. Uh... Here's a good thing about this: you can actually see them running towards the cockpit. There we go. Systems off. So it's actually a really nice game. Like I said many times, I would have preferred uh, the Atari version. <coughs> But there was, uh, you know, no way that my parents could afford even the uh, 99 pound Atari 800 XL that was stock dumped in 1984 by Jack Trevor. There were 99 pound 99 for an Atari 800 XL. That's a lot of computer. Uh, that was the same price as something like an Acorn Electron. It was only 20 quid more than the Mattel Aquarius. He was emptying the warehouse full of, uh, you know, Atari 8-bit computer cartridge games as well, which he'd inherited in the, uh, you know, the stock. And, uh, you know, so he got cheap games on cartridge, and uh, I'm surprised it didn't do better, actually. Of uh, course, the Atari 65XE, which replaced it, and is uh, functionally identical to the 800XL, but the keyboard is more shit on it. Um, yeah, you can't really play this game full speed. On the Atari you can. I did used to play this a lot actually on my C64 because I like the game. Uh, and famously, this version, the C64 version, was programmed by the guy who wrote Seamus 2 for the C64. top of the uh, mountains there. Oh, they get to shoot some stuff now. Well, oh, probably was that fluky when I shot the uh, things. It seemed to be in a bit of an ambush area there. This is only level four, so I mean, this is still really a kids level, I suppose, training level. Level 1 really is a training level, I suppose. Yeah, see, he's going to be up here somewhere. Now. 
So we only have to get one more pilot anyway. Now you can have the airlock ready open which speeds things up, but they don't fire at you while your systems are off anyway. So the biggest problem is accidentally pressing the S key instead of the A key for airlock and turn the systems on and frying the bastard. Now I should be able to boost to the mothership now. Well, that's so a bit weird. So I like a good uh, classic Citroen, it's got auto leveling. Yeah, see, a um, bit of a coincidence. Yeah, a mothership turns up when I've got my full complement. I'm not here to rescue you, mate, you're here to do a job. Do your job. Don't be a millennial and shirk your fucking one mind, they're just dumb anyway. There we go, we can fire the boosters. So, uh, yeah, it was either this or not playing it at all, really. But I was lucky enough to have a mate who had this on the Atari. Not getting any memories through this game, though. Even though we've got a sausage roll, look. Proper 1984 size, oh, you can't see shit. Well, I'm sorry, the uh, Manic Miner torch is upstairs. Probably the music that's more memorable for me. Now the story that goes with Rescue on Fractalus, so that's very interesting. So I got Rescue on Fractalus and Ghostbusters actually for the C64 as a, a Christmas present. But uh, I actually found where they were hidden before Christmas. So I actually loaded them both up. It was about a week before Christmas, because it would have been when I was, you know, off school for the uh, Christmas holidays. Not that I was a little kid then, not really, no. Fully potent uh, testosterone thing, yeah, anyway. And uh, yeah, so they are in, uh, in my mum's uh, bedroom in the cupboard where the uh, you know the face towels for the bathroom are which are a shelf above or below the uh, bath sheets I can't remember and my mum had this uh, great like uh, you know three piece wardrobe unit there so like in the middle there was sort of like a built in uh, dressing table that bridged uh, two large wardrobes and these were like Beechwood carcasses with uh, white uh, Louvre uh, doors with these uh, big round, uh, you know, handles on them. I'm sure they were gold, but they could have been silver. Um, you know, like the knocker on the, uh, you know, the 10 Downing Street London uh, houses kind of townhouse thing. So anyway, I found them. I might not have been, no, I, I think I was actually looking for, I think that was the thing I used to do. I used to look for my presents and sometimes I'd find them, but my mum was quite sneaky, so she'd wrap them up really early and hide them wrapped up, so. Not that that didn't stop me, uh, you know, that certainly didn't stop me carefully unpeeling the wrapping. <clears throat> or even removing the wrapping if I could find exactly the same wrapping paper in the sellotape. Yeah, I was notorious for uh, playing with my toys before Christmas. But anyway, Rescue on Fractalus and Ghostbusters were the two games. So I might have loaded up Ghostbusters first because I'd already played Rescue on Fractalus on my mate's Atari 800. Uh, and that was great, that was. He had this, uh, you know, manager's uh, office swivel chair, you know, the one with the uh, metal armrest with the uh, leather pads, and it was white leather, because, you know, this was the early to mid 80s. Pre-Miami Vice era, as I like to call it, when the 80s got really fucking shit. Yeah, French Connection and Le Coq Sportif, 
cock is the word, mate. We were fascinated with shit like that and pastel colours, but uh, garish patterns. But uh, anyway, so I loaded both up, probably Ghostbusters first. And then uh, I would have loaded up another one, and then once the the last game, whatever that was going to be, I think it was Rescue on Fractal, so I left that loaded up, and probably left my C64 on all night and played it the next morning as well. Uh, after putting them back in the uh, in the cupboard, and that's that story over with. And what a great story it is. Isn't this a great idea? Yeah, I don't know about that. We'll see. Right. Mr. Quickshot Turbo. Be good.